Welcome to the Lander Bet Sports Betting Show. Looking at week 11 in the NFL, got play up props and anytime touchdowns for you in this episode. Roughly six player props and five anytime touchdown plays for you guys. So, gonna be looking at that stuff here with you. That sounds good. Give the video a like. Quick look at how we've done recently. Didn't have any picks on Thursday night football, but did put out a video with some strong leans. Couldn't get back to things in time after the injury reports came out to put out plays in the VIP Discord. I felt really good about those leans that we had. Hopefully, you guys cashed on some of them. Also had a really good night in the NBA on Friday. I want to let you know about. Uh, went 6-1 and one on the straight plays. Had a few dart throws as well for some small unit plays that didn't hit. But still ended with 3.6 nights on the uh, units on the night. Nine units now on the season. So feeling really good about NFL and NBA. Let's get into these looks for, when, for Sunday, rather, in the NFL. As we get into my first look here, do want to let you guys know about the VIP Discord. If you want to make sure that you're not missing a single bet that I'm putting out there, go ahead and use the link in the description of the video. You can also get 40% off right now. Still going strong for another few weeks with the NBA Pass at 40% off if you want to skip that monthly price and just pay up front. Also, plenty of education in there for you guys. Looking to help you out with some one-on-one -on -one betting consultations. All that's a part of the VIP Discord. But let's get right into Jorge Pickens. Love George Pickens. Best player on my fantasy team these days, which is trash. Uh, and also clearly the best receiver on this team and turning into maybe the best deep threat in the NFL these days with danger rust behind center for him, which is really the, the, the basis for most of these bets. We've seen him have this level of success three straight games with Russ. We can still get him at about 70 plus yards for about even money, which was the bet that I gave out last week and hit comfortably should have gave out the touchdown as well. I still think he's great for that because the red zone targets are there for him. Uh, fourth in the league in targets inside the 20 and sixth in air yards, meaning he might not even need to be in in the red zone to get that touchdown, which we've seen plenty from him this season. Um, in the three games with Russ, close to 100 yards a game, five receptions, only gone under four and a half, which is the receptions line here once. But with a guy like this, with the air yards he's seeing, I don't really see the point in going for the receptions. If he gets five receptions and he doesn't get 70 yards, I'd be very surprised from a dude who's pulling down about 20 yards a target, right? And I think the other deep threat on their team now, Mike Williams, is helping him. I, I know he is because we have not seen George Pickens open in the middle of the field, able to pick up those slant route plays when there's nobody that needs to cover the other side of the field. There's never been a receiver on the other side that you had to worry about. So you can bring both safeties over to George Pickens' side. You can bring an extra corner over there if you need to. Uh, when they're not running Calvin Austin out there alongside him as well. But now you've got a couple other receivers that at least need to be paid attention to. So Pickens should continue to eat for this Steelers squad. Still running through player props before we get to touchdowns, but I'm going to tell you right now, for Nick Chubb, I don't need to wait to tell you I like the touchdown at nearly 2-1 to one for him. It's still available as I'm recording this on Saturday morning. And the rushing yard should be about, about 63 and a half yards. Still plenty of opportunity there to eat and get over uh, with Nick Chubb because I would be going over on his stuff this week as well. Um, he's had a, a week to ramp up and get into things. He's had a bye week now as well. And the touchdown really comes down to like, well, who else are you going to give it to on this team? Number one. And number two, like this is a good matchup for him against the Saints for yards and touchdowns. And he's had three plus red zone touches per game since he came back. And I, I only think that's going to continue to go up as this rush opportunity share for him should continue to just climb from about 42 percent the, the last game that he played to probably closer to 65 until he gets up to the roughly 80% opportunity share. There's no reason to be running other people when you have Nick Chubb on your team if he's healthy enough to go. Uh, for the Saints, D, just bad. Awful run defense, we know that. Um, gonna probably have to try to stack the box, which will be make the pass even more available. But I think this Browns team knows that they don't wanna just rely on Jameis Winston to win the game. They'd like to have him help win the game. They'd like Nick Chubb to be the guy that wins the game by controlling the clock uh, and getting at least about 14, 15 rush attempts in this one. That's what I really like about this bet is that I think we can finally bank on some volume for him and some touches. And actually, weirdly, the Saints defense, it's already second worst in terms of yards per carry, but it's way worse at home despite having that rocket crowd behind it 182 and a half rushing yards per game that it's allowing at home this season and i would just expect that to continue uh, against the browns offensive line that's had good success just hasn't had quite the backs behind it and now we've got nick chubb in there to get those yards First fade of the week for me in play a props. Got to go with Kirk Cousins under on the pass yards. Still at about 240. And I like that down to about 235, 230 in that range. I still think that's a good number. But if you see a 2-4 with any single digit in there, I like under pass yards for Kirk Cousins. Welcoming in, uh, well, not welcoming. He's going to be welcomed by Patrick Sertan and the Broncos in Denver because this game is outdoor, outdoors in a Denver uh, weather that should be at least cold uh, and a little bit blustery. Some flurries expected um, as well as it gets really cold into November. So 
Kirk Cousins, not good against non-division opponents because his division opponents are trash, as we know right now with the defenses that you see from the Saints and the Panthers and even the Bucks, who are banged up and, and giving up a ton in the past game. Um, and in the last two seasons, he's also really bad outdoors. Uh, you get comfortable playing inside a zone. Things are nice and comfy. Your hands don't need to be inside of a hand warmer. And then you go outside to a place like Denver where it's way colder and he's actually averaged 50 fewer yards per game outdoors than playing indoors gets to play indoors again obviously in hot Atlanta um, and that will continue to be where he's more successful that's just what we believe in after this game the Falcons have a slightly easier passing defense sort of schedule ahead of them uh, but up till now they've had to run the ball a ton because they play playing another really good pass defense here in uh outside the division I should say in the Broncos and Atlanta has as a result has been seventh in rush play rate over the course of the season and over the course of the last three or so as they played some good pass defense as well we've seen them just resort to the run and give Bijan those 20 touches per game on the run game couple in the pass but for the most part you got some banged up receivers uh with Mooney's at least questionable I think he's going to play but he's at least a little bit banged up and Drake London should be draped by uh Patrick Sertan all game so it's not going to be easy pickings for anybody in this one we'll go under on the pass yards for Kirk one more under. I got to fade DeAndre Swift in this divisional matchup versus the Packers. I don't think this is going to be a good game for this Bears offense to uh, continue to get rush yards. We've got a new OC in there for them as well. We'll see if he can help the O-line, which is now ranked second worst, according to PFF, and does not get push on the offensive line. We know they're bottom 10 in adjusted yards before contact for their running back. They've had a couple good games against some bad D-lines where they were able to really get uh, DeAndre Swift into big holes on the stretch plays and on the outside. But you really kind have seen uh, running backs who are successful against the Packers this season have been more bruiser running backs and guys that can run really well between the tackles, whereas DeAndre Swift really relies on athleticism and strength in the open field, but he needs to be in the open field. You can't be uh, forcing him to find tight holes to, to run through for him to be successful. It's just not where his strengths lie, as we probably know from the talk online. But with the new OC as well, a guy coming from McVay's coaching tree, and know he's and a tight ends coach as well. Know he's going to like the pass, the short passing game over uh, things like the run game when he can use those dink and dunks. So I would expect a decent amount of passing from Caleb Williams in this one in, in plays where you might expect a rush at times, a little bubble screen or a short slant or using the tight ends, obviously, like I said. So um, if, if that's the case, if the negative game script comes to fruition, where we do, I do think that this uh, Packers team should have some success at least running the ball against this uh, Bears defense. And it's probably going to be a nasty grinded out game, but I would still say there's going to be enough of a negative game script for the Bears that Caleb Williams is going to be throwing a bit more than they're going to be running the ball. Another prop before we get to those touchdown plays, Travis Kelsey receiving yards. Doesn't seem that hard. And there is not many uh, weapons around Patrick Mahomes now, but I think we're going to be in line for a bit more of a shootout finally from a Chiefs game than we've seen previously and the one game that was a shoot well it was a shootout even though the Chiefs were running all over the 49ers um, it was still a good amount of points and I expect a similar sort of 45 to 50 point game in this one and I think Travis Kelsey is going to continue to see the double digit targets that he's been seeing that's what this comes down to is I mean at the beginning of the season he was meant he said he was going to come into it slowly he said that it was going to be a ramp up for him before he was at full strength and the the Travis Kelsey that we have come to know and they had Rasheed Rice and other guys that were still healthy at the time that could help them get to where they wanted to be. We all forget that Hollywood Brown was supposed to be on this team, although he's always injured, so whatever. But regardless, they had weapons other than Kelsey, and now they don't. Just that simple. They've got new Copkins in there. Xavier Worthy is worth dropping if you have him in fantasy. I'll say that. Um, but in the last five games, since they needed to have him, Travis Kelsey is back. 41 catches on 50 targets. 81 air yards per game in the last three since we got new Hopkins in there, which is helpful because you can't just bracket uh, Kelsey with a cornerback and a linebacker now. We've got to at least respect the other weapon that is out there. Nukes looked really good since he's been there with Patrick Mahomes. And either way, this, this Bill's linebacking core, which is going to be just sitting there in zone, is just the weakest part of its past defense. Their line, their safeties have done a lot better uh, since they've gotten healthy, obviously. Matt Milano not likely to come back this week just yet, so that linebacking core continues to be the weakest coverage group for this team, and, and we'll continue to believe in Patrick, uh, in Patrick Mahomes and uh, and Travis Kelsey's ability to just know where each other's at at all times, turn around, sit down, catch a, catch a ball, have a cup of coffee, and get 15 yards on each play. So I like this up to about 75, 80 yards uh, and, and the over for Kelsey this week. Might as well just kick it off with Kelsey then because I also like his touchdown. Don't forget, I do like Nick Chubb's touchdown as well. But uh, Travis Kelsey on the tutty. As we get into the tutties too, quick reminder, go ahead and like that video if you would. It goes a long way for me if you're getting anything out of this, which I hope you are. Uh, Travis Kelsey in the tutties. By the way, 
Also another interruption, Dieter was on last week. He's not able to be here this week. I should call that out. A lot of you were complaining about how verbose he is, how long-winded he is. He was also six for six between player props and anytime touchdowns. So he would be here if he could. He just couldn't be here for this video this week. We'll get him back on next week. If you don't like it, I'm sorry, but the man is uh, hitting at a really nice rate and making us some money. So I'm going to keep having him on. Travis Kelsey in the tutties, 11 red zone targets in the last five. That includes a game where he didn't have a red zone target, uh, partly because he's bottled up by Fred Warner on the 49ers. I'm not going to hold that against him. Fred Warner is the best linebacker in the league. Uh, other than that, we're talking about him getting 11 red zone targets in four games games essentially right because he had none in one of those games against the uh the the um 49ers like i said so three per game i'm great with uh more than three per game right in, in those four or yeah about that um four tds in seven games versus buffalo as well in his career including two tutties in their uh playoff game last year so i like him to continue to have success against that linebacking core and like i said uh, get some red zone targets here for him to get in the end zone gotta bring up Jawan jennings he is going to be one of the few receivers left for Brock Purdy right now. I mean, we know that we're going to have Ricky Pearsall and Debo Samuel in there as well. Pearsall got his first career touchdown last week, plus 300, which Dieter told you to take. Hopefully you listened. There is going to maybe be George Kittle. We're not sure. He got a tutty last week. He's questionable, which he always is. Uh, another straight week of questionable, though, when he was maybe a, a legit question mark to not play last week. Does make you think that Kittle is continuing to actually feel that hamstring tightness. But either way, Jawan Jennings has been a top target for Brock Purdy, especially since he came back from injury, right? And last week he came back, he actually led the team in target share. Uh, he led the team in end zone targets. He had 50% of them as well. And these are not red zone. These are him in the end zone getting targeted. Uh, a, a big wide receiver that they've enjoyed having in that sort of uh, Brandon Ayuk spot when he's there and, and really fills in super nicely, especially with his aggression going up and getting those balls at the, at the point of attack. One, at least one end zone target in five of six games that he's played this season over the last six games, I should say, shows you how much of a, a, a target in scoring position essentially that he is for Brock Purdy. So with still a really good number near three to one for him, even at like 2.5 to one or so, I think this is a really good look and worth a sprinkle for a touchdown. Somebody is getting in the end zone via the run for the Colts. It's either going to be John and Taylor or Anthony Richardson, or why not both, honestly? And Anthony Richardson's at about two to one, so you're getting much better odds than the minus 110 or so that you're looking at for Jonathan Taylor. Um, it's just hard for me to justify the minus 110 for Jay Taylor, but the vibes are so low in New York uh, for the Jets that I'm kind of like, look, somebody's going to get in against a defense that's been pretty weak against the rush, we'll say. Um, Kyler Murray had two rushing TDs last week against them. Uh, then you had Jeff Ulbrich, the, the, the head coach, coming in and basically showing a how-to tackle video to the Jets defense and guys like Sauce Gardner came out and said like, yo, we're professionals, we know how to tackle, didn't seem to really appreciate it. That's where I'm getting my vibes are so low statement from. Uh, but you look at AR, he was benched and then he in, in you know missed a, a couple games because of that. But he was also a little bit hurt and then they were like, let's keep you out essentially, right? So we'll call that a benching. 21 carries though, into the last two games before that benching, 101 yards. And you saw the pass game not really working for him. I think in a, in a situation where he's playing for his future, man, like it's, I'm not saying like he doesn't perform and he's out, but there's the likelihood that if he doesn't perform at the end, by the end of this season and going into next season, they might be looking elsewhere for a different quarterback uh, if they don't believe in him yet. At the very least, next year is his last opportunity. All of this is an audition. When you're auditioning for your job, I would say it's smart to stick to your strengths, right? Like show that you can get success and at the very least get the pass game to help you open up, or excuse me, get the run game to help you open up the pass game uh, and get this guy in the end zone because this, when he's been healthy, which he hasn't really been much this year, but when he was last year, especially to start the season, five touchdowns in his first five games. So I'm going to keep going at a really good price for a guy that we know has a ceiling of scoring at least one tutty in uh, each game he's in. All right, if you're still with me, you get the uh, sort of lotto play of the day here for the ATTD, going with Nick Westbrook Akine and a plus 500 player here to get a touchdown where I, I just think he's way more valuable than that as a red zone target. And I think so do the Titans as they've shown uh, throughout this season and in his career. But starting with last week, up to 100% routes run, right? We've got no more new Hopkins in there. So it's him and Calvin Ridley with some Tyler Boyd. But Tyler Boyd has just not been much of a target at all this year, especially for Will Levis, who can't seem to get the ball out into the middle of the field accurately. But we don't need him to get the ball out in the middle of the field accurately to take Nick Westbrook Akine to get a tutty. We just need him to find the very big, slightly slower wide receiver in the end zone. And that's where he is always targeted, right? That's where he does his damage is as a big, uh, big target in the red zone and in the end zone. Um, and he's had three straight weeks of touchdowns before last week, week six through nine. Nice. 
he uh, had a touchdown in each of those, a, a couple of end zone targets in those three weeks as well. And if he's going to get end zone targets against Minnesota and probably have Shaq Griffin on him, who's at least a couple inches shorter, he should be able to get up over Shaq Griffin uh, in the end zone there giving up 10 TDs to wide receivers, a bunch of those in the red zone as well, and end zone targets. So that's where he's going to be targeted. 5-1 to one is a great price for a little sprinkle for him to get into the end zone. Last reminder, outlier.bet is the, the uh, one-stop shop place that I'm using to get everything I need for these NFL plays. has some really good uh, you know, sort of underlying metrics that'll help you make these looks and not just the overlying things like receptions. No, there's some really good stuff in there to help you make sure that you're finding the best value on these plays. Got a link in the description of the video for seven free days if you want to check it out. Either way, I'll be back here with some more stuff for you guys coming from Monday Night Football, so make sure you check that one out as well. Until we see you next, happy betting.